so uh, Natalia, please introduce yourself. Uh, so I'm Natalia. I am the AIMP Sustainability Manager for the British Antarctic Survey, uh, or BAS, as I tend to, as we all tend to call it. So if there was any organisation for whom, and I, I hate to say this, but for whom uh, carbon literacy might not be necessary, wouldn't, wouldn't <laughs> it be you? Um, it would be lovely to think that, uh, Phil. However, I think um, whilst we have a lot of people who are very well informed on carbon and who um, even go as far as to inform the IPCC of um, you know, the current situation in the polls um, and our research is used for those ends. It is different when it comes to actually translating what needs to happen to our lifestyles and to the way we operate. Um, it's also different when it comes to even being able to communicate about carbon on a level that everyone can understand. So whilst we have some incredible scientists within uh, BAS who, who definitely understand the severity of the climate crisis, I would say there's still a lot to learn in terms of transmitting that information to others um, from actually changing our own way of working and our own habits and lifestyles. So I think the carbon literacy course is actually quite valuable across the board. And a good place to pilot it would be to pilot it on the SDA, on the Sir David Attenborough. The SDA. So the SDA. <laughs> we do yeah. love our acronyms. You certainly at Bass. do. Yeah. Right. That's great. Um, so suddenly, carbon literacy is hitching a lift uh, on the SDA. Um, it, it, does it just go straight there? T tell me about you know the, the journey. The, the, yeah, please. Yeah. So what normally happens is the the ship leaves Harwich with um, a crew and a lot of cargo, a lot of relief, which constitutes things like supplies, um, everything from toilet paper through to construction materials through to scientific equipment. And it heads out and it takes around three weeks to cross um, the ocean and you know, it crosses over the equator and gets down to one of our gateway cities, which is usually at the moment, it's the Falkland Islands. And on that ship, you trained in carbon literacy. So uh, tell me about the, the the setting and and how you got people um, uh, to come to the training. So ship life is quite different, um, I would say, to office life, not just because you're floating, but because there's a very different culture on board. Um, so people are very, very busy and the crew is, is constantly busy. Um, they have very little downtime when they're uh, on board. So when we were thinking about when to hold the carbon literacy session, um, we had to sort of take a few factors into consideration. Um, the first was that it was very unlikely that we'd get everyone on the ship into a, a carbon literacy day. We'd probably have to break it up into smaller chunks. There is downtime um, for uh, crew and passengers after dinner. There was a, a, fa a very nice culture of having uh, science talks where often scientists would present um really great talks on the kind of science that they'd be undertaking in Antarctica. And so we piggybacked on that. So instead of delivering it in a day long session or two half day sessions, which is what we discussed in Cambridge, we chopped it up even further into one hour sessions and delivered it in a series of six sessions across um, two or three weeks, which gave people the opportunity to um, come along for a taster session to see if they wanted to attend further. And it also allowed people to absorb that information on a slower time scale. And it became a series of conversations rather a rather than a hefty training day, which on the ship could have been um, quite a lot to handle. Did you still feel that there was that moment for some, which is common feedback across a lot of carbon literacy, that you know, oh boy, this really is not good, is it? You know, so the the, the bottom of the emotional trough, as it were. Mm. Was that even coming through with, with your cohort? Or, or was the existing knowledge a bit of a buffer to that? There were emotional moments where people just realised, actually, this is bleaker than I thought, or it's sig significantly worse than I thought. Um, and I think... The course does a good job of uh, making the point that every single decision that we make 
is important. From here on in, it will be important. I think if we'd have tried to deliver carbon literacy, say, 10 years ago, when everything felt slightly less urgent, then that message may not have hit home quite so hard. But I think with the new IPCC reports outlining just how much there is to play for in terms of what there is still what we can still save i think yeah the course did give enough information and enough hope that could bring people out of that emotional trough as you've called it um but it did open some people's eyes to how bad the, the situation actually is we we talk about melting ice as o- almost a stereotype a cliche almost but there you are you're, you're we're seeing it <laughs> in it Yes. <laughs> did, 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 so did that have an extra resonance there or or is it just mm, the job? I was there for five weeks and the thought of all of that ice just not being there and um, changing the very look and feel of Antarctica in a very super, you know, that superficial feeling of, oh, it won't look like this if we carry on was there. But I think it does bring the message home even harder when you're crossing th- over the sea and you're seeing icebergs and you're seeing you know that wildlife on those icebergs you're seeing even our own operations being affected by climate change where if we talk to people who have been at bass for over 25 years of which there are quite a few they can all cite um how different the stations look now compared to how it was 25 years ago so we have we have a long we have a long um institutional history and there are people here who remember it and they can attest to how different things are so yeah. it's yeah it really does hit home very very tangible so you were delivering the training uh, in in the ship's lounge with the bar yes and and um what were the standout moments for you the games really bring it to life and you know it definitely gives me a break from talking and you know yeah yeah, you know people do need variety um and so doing the games people had to have discussions with their co-workers and um crew members to actually figure out things and work it out for themselves and that would always spark conversation so after every game we had conversations around um what it meant you know clarifying things and it just deepened Um, people's knowledge and people's interest. Other standout moments were um, seeing people's reactions to certain information and suddenly having light bulb moments or something that they'd long held as true or long held as um, very right suddenly being questioned people did not realise that LAM was quite so high up the carbon hierarchy. And everyone knows that beef is the baddie, um, but they had no idea that LAM was the next one down. And so the message of don't get focused on on the actual number, just sort of shift yourself down that, that sliding scale. I think people appreciated that because the the course didn't ask people to just give up meat entirely. It just said, just see how much you can shift yourself down. If if you can go from high to a medium meat eater or from a medium to a low. And, you know, that's that might be a question of just a couple of meals a week where you're shifting down. So I think people really appreciated that lack of judgment and that that wide array of options that was presented. And starting the journey. And starting the journey. Yeah, I'm just genuinely impressed at how open and receptive people are to change. Um, It will take a while. And I think there's probably room for carbon literacy to do a follow-up course where once you've got, you know, a a big cohort under your belt, where do you take them from there? Um, But yeah, I I would say it's a great resource for anyone really considering how to embed um, the right values, the right information the right behaviors into their workforce um so yeah um thank you so much for for giving that to us